Alright, so let me be real here. This isn't something that's killing the Marvel Cinematic Universe, nor is it such a problem that it's detracting my enjoyment of MCU movies, but it's something I've noticed for a really long time and it's gotten to the point where I just want to talk about it because I want to complain about something. Is it a nitpick? Yeah. So for me, the best kind of quote-unquote superhero suit is the superhero suit that's kept simple. In comics, you have a design like this. Boom. Easy. Boom. Easy, but then we get to stuff that's more complicated, and then you're losing me. For example, I'm a fan of the fantastical elements of fiction. Stuff doesn't have to make too much sense to me. It's all about that iconography. In real life, though, the CW has suits that look like leather jackets. And I get it, it's practical and their budget is low. Also, isn't it crazy that the CW hasn't been profitable since its inception? Anyways, simple, colorful, iconic is the jam. Invincible has that vibe, the Incredibles suits have that vibe. Take Batman. He's black and gray, looks like a bat, he has a bad on his chest, easy peasy. Then we get to that Spider-Woman redesign that's basically a jacket and was extremely desaturated and boring. I don't know why they did this, then they redesigned again, and this is dope. Simpler, much more classic, feels like a superhero again. Half the time for me, making things too realistic or too complicated makes you lose that fantastical awe. At least, I lose it. Now, I've gone in this whole spiel of how I prefer the simple nature of superhero suits to segue into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because their suits, half the time, are over-designed to death. And it's getting worse. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, Imi. Imi is the world's first low-carb, high-protein, and 100% plant-based instant ramen. Each serving of Imi has 21 grams of protein, 19 grams of fiber, and only 6 grams of net carbs. It's non-GMO and is 35% lower in sodium versus traditional brands. There's less bloating and thirst after eating. So check it, Imi is up to 85% lower in net carbs than other brands. Imi contains up to 3 times more protein than other brands. Imi contains up to 4 times more fiber than other instant ramen brands. And lastly, most traditional instant ramen brands use meat-based ingredients and and unhealthy preservatives in their soup bases. Imi is a 100% plant-based product that uses high-quality ingredients. So click the link below and use code BROWNTABLE at checkout or go to imieats.com slash browntable for $5 off your order. That's imieats.com slash browntable or just click the link below and use code BROWNTABLE for $5 off a variety pack today. Imi is also proud to offer a 100% happiness guarantee so you can try Imi risk-free and decide for yourself if Imi is worth it. If you're not happy with your Imi, they will offer you a full refund within 30 days of purchase. Thanks so much, Emmy, for sponsoring today's video, and let's get on with nitpicking. So, in the beginning, Marvel adapted superhero suits to perfection, while keeping them still realistic. Thor, ripped directly out of the comics, his suit is a bit more complex, but it suits the aesthetic, it's regal, it's Shakespearean, it's mythical, it's a fantasy. Iron Man, armor, technology, nothing too streamlined, it's bulky yet slick, the best Iron Man suits are the ones at the beginning. Captain America also has his classic look, but he's not gonna wear spandex to fight in World War II, right? So yeah, he has a more militarized look that makes sense. He literally just wears a colorful combat uniform. Still, he does wear his traditional suit for a moment, and that is dope. And then in the Avengers, Captain America dons an extremely comic booky suit, and to be honest, it's not even that badly designed, it's just that the material doesn't work. That being said, right, when all these characters come together, you get the visual sense that these different worlds are clashing together. They all feel distinct and kind of odd being next to each other, and that's what makes it so cool. Best of all, the characters' suits are all vibrant and dynamic, except for Hawkeye, sadly. Now look, I'm not gonna act like I know exactly what's going on behind the suit designs or who the artists are, who approves the designs. I don't know the process, I'm just going off what I'm seeing on screen. And I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. But as the MCU keeps going, visually it starts to homogenize a bit. Everything starts looking less vibrant thanks to the color grading, and all the superheroes begin to look like they got their suits from the same tailor. Not that the suits are bad, by the way, they're really cool and are well designed individually. But once you start to line up all these characters together, you start to get a little tickle in your mind. The Iron Spider suit? I am so glad it got destroyed because man, did the colors clash. I personally was not fond of it and didn't really like the constant details and lines when they weren't necessary. Especially when this was the original suit from the comics, it was, it was that simple. So, I'm so happy Doctor Strange looks like this because, I'm not joking, if you check out concept art, this dude was literally about to look like any other stereotypical MCU character. Here's something I don't know if you've noticed. There's this little pattern that's in almost every MCU suit ever. You wanna know what it is? I got you. Yep, that. 
There's also the MCU obsession of adding lines everywhere, and I mean everywhere. The homecoming suit? Uh, random lines on the blue to make it look techy. Personally, not a fan. His new suit? Much better. Shang-Chi's suit could have been more cloth-like. It could have felt more like it came from Tao Lo. Like, look at what everyone else is wearing. Look at the concept art. And this is the final result. I mean, is it cool? Yeah, it's alright, but I feel like there's a version of this suit that could have looked much more different to contrast his father's. Wenwu's suit. I feel like they both could have gotten their suits at the same shop. Now let's segue a bit, the Avengers game. Remember this game? Remember how nobody really loved these suits, but everyone deems them okay? Well, the alternative skins can be a lot worse. And this is a prime example of what I'm talking about, over-designing. So you take a suit, and then you add lines, and then you add lines, and you call it a day. But not before adding more lines. That's what Marvel's starting to do, and their suits are little by little starting to give me Avengers game vibes at times. I think one of the weirdest choices ever was the Eternals suits. The Eternals looked like this in the comics, yeah? And in the movie, they have the most desaturated, busy suits I've ever seen. Do they look interesting? Sure. Do they look alien? Sure. But are they iconic? Are they memorable? No. And now, before I go into what I think is one of the worst suits the MCU has made so far, I want to shift a bit and talk about a company that does get superhero suits right. And that's DC. Because holy shit, almost every single suit feels like it's been ripped right out of a comic book. Even suits I'm not particularly fond of, like the Flashes, look great. One of the only misses was Cyborg's suit in Justice League. It was too busy for me, but what works for it is that it looks so alien and so weird that he stands out from the Justice League and remains iconic all the same. DC Films managed to nail iconic imagery and costumes every time. Superman is wearing tights. Batman is wearing tights. Does it matter? No, because they look sick as fuck. Batman finally wears armor in Justice League, but it's not like his default outfit. And it's what the Avengers did, but to its maximum potential visually. Zack Snyder's idea of having all these different groups of people representing different aspects of the world come together, humans, Amazons, etc., and having them all look visually distinct works so well. Meanwhile, Marvel has recently released this. Thor. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is actually in the movie, right? Because this is promo art. This was also released, which is also not great for me, but it is better, but it's still not great. And I don't know which is legit. Maybe both are, but oh man. This is peak overdesign. I'm, I'm still in shock. So the colors aren't bad right? It's just that they're everywhere. This is Avengers game level to me. This is the busiest thing I've ever seen. No offense to whoever illustrated this or whoever approved this. I'm sure you're a great person, but I do not like this design. Like, <laughs> not the little eagle on the helmet. And if you look at the whole image, all these characters look like they're from the same place. They all look like they're from space. Like, there's no distinction to me that this is an Asgardian and that this is an Earthbound superhero. Same with Miss Marvel's design, and it just keeps getting worse. I mean, look at Thor. He used to look like this, then he progressed to this, his best look, and now we, we get this? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Do you know how much of a relief it was to see Toby and Andrew in Spider-Man No Way Home and they had their classic, simple suits on? That was so relieving, because suits don't have to be busy. They can be simple, they can be unique by staying simple and classical. There's keeping things fresh, right? And then there's this. So if anything, I just want to say, let these comic book suits be iconic, simple, and yeah, I get that you need detail and you need padding because this is real life, but you don't have to go overboard. I don't want another Iron Spider suit, and this doesn't hurt the movies. It's just kind of an eyesore after a while for me. While the Eternal suits are boring, I like the direction of, yeah, let's make something totally different. I respect it. If that mentality is applied and they make suits more simple and iconic, I genuinely think the MCU will look all the better for it. And that's all I have to say. Nitpicking over. Happy New Year! Happy 2022! The animated series I've been making for so long is finally coming out this year. The first episode hits April 2nd, 2022, Interstellar Ranger Commence. Please check it out, the link is in the description. Thanks so much Infernite for this she fan art, it looks super dope. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks so much patrons for supporting me for so long. It's been like, for like some of you have been on helping me for like years. So seriously, thank you so much. It really, really does help me. Seeing the trajectory of this channel, it's nearing 300,000 subscribers. And you know, I'm just so thankful. So thank you, thank you so much. I really mean it. And to everyone that's been subscribed and has become a Chad, thank you so much. You are the chattiest Chads of all Chad of, you're the chattiest Chads that I've ever chatted in the Chad nation. 
And uh, I'm just, I'm so excited for you to see what we're going to be coming up with in 2022. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be sexy. It's going to be super dope, super fun. Pretty much every month, once IRC drops, it's going to have an, an episode. So animation is going to be coming out like boom, boom, boom every, every single month. So I hope you're excited for more of that. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for coming to the table. And I'll see you all next time.